Okay. Alright, so again you can see on the surface of the sun the spirals of the jets visible coming out of the sun. The same principle is happening on the surface of the sun as well. And you might think, okay, this is, no, this is baloney because, you know, I know that the sun is this big, you know, hydrogen bomb effectively, but you know what? There's some recent data that's been produced where um, they've realized that we thought that the chemical composition of the sun was a certain way, that there was a certain amount of oxygen. You know, actually we got the figure completely wrong. When a recent me a measurement was made, uh, we realized that we got the amount of oxygen in the sun completely wrong. And what as astrophysicists said is like, we have to go back and revision our calculations and our models of the sun completely. We've got it so wrong. And they realized that we, they th we don't understand the sun at all. So the current models of the sun are now completely up in the air. Mm. You know, so um, we think we got it all worked out. Actually, when we get the data back, the data looks completely and utterly different. So, you know, what we have at the moment is theories in cosmology, theories in physics, and the data is not fitting it. So, you know, we're having to squidge our way, you know, and actually get, you know, the, the data to try and fit the theory instead of changing the theory. You know, so what we have here is a new theory, a new framework. You know, and it fits this new era that we're going into, which is an era of consciousness being part of the fabric of science. Okay, and that's what we need, because as I said, it can't work unless you understand that consciousness is fundamental to the universe, because you can't understand the perception horizon. So this is the surface of the sun, the close-up of the sun, uh, this is a coronal mass ejection. Okay, the other thing is, not only does, uh, do our stars behave like this, and by the way, not just uh, stars like the sun, you also find red dwarfs and... Um, you know, red dwarfs and things like white dwarfs, but they're supposed to be stars that are at the end of their lives, right? Guess what we see coming out of that? Jets, bipolar jets, and x-rays. And if you go and look up any of these articles, you know, you'll find that people are puzzled because they're thinking, why on earth are these old stars so active? You know, because they're doing the same sort of process. So the same thing is happening in our planets. And I don't know if you know this, but um, we don't have a satisfactory model of how planets form. Our current model of how planets form is that, you know, there's little particles of dust that uh, come together and then suddenly <coughs> they, for some reason, they clump and clump and clump and then suddenly they get really big, you know, and, uh, but nobody's ever tried, uh, figured out why they form these clumps in the first place. Why don't they just clump and then fall apart again? Nobody's been able to figure out what makes the planetary dust so sticky to form in the first place. So we haven't actually got a good mo model of how planets form. Guess what we find coming out of planets? Are you, can you guess? Bipolar. Yep, bipolar jets. <laughs> the same process and x-rays. Okay, Chandra telescope is uh, at the moment going into, into space and looking at our solar system and examining um, the uh, uh, x-ray picture of the universe. So it's specifically taking x-rays of everything. And what it's finding is that um, unexpected pictures are coming out. You know, so as I said, the red dwarfs and the, uh, you know, uh, the planets. And this is, for example, just to give you an example of the unexpected nature, this is Saturn. Can you see Saturn's rings? And um, this is the center of Saturn. Now, this is Saturn's X-ray globe, okay? And the, the current explanation for why all these planets have X-rays at all is because they're simply reflecting the sun, right? So, um, you know, they, the people are thinking, well, why, why do these planets give up such high-energy X-rays? You know, they're, they're not actually, they're not stars, so why are they doing it? Right, so you can see that this glow is actually coming from the body of Saturn, okay? Now, if it was really being reflected from the sun, the rings would also have a glow. That would be expected, but it's not coming off the rings. And that is a puzzle to astrophysics at the moment, why it's not Because it should also be reflecting the X-rays. So it's another picture that act actually Saturn is producing X-rays, and these rings are just like the accretion disk around a black hole. Do you get it? So the Saturn is another black hole, okay? And all you're doing is getting the same principle um, expressed at different levels. 
And as you get it expressed at different levels, you get different behaviors like stars or planets, yeah? Okay, and so this is um, one of Jupiter's moons. And, uh, you know, we, I don't know if you know this, but we don't actually know why volcanoes happen. We haven't got a satisfactory explanation for why volcanoes happen, but why volcanic eruptions happen. You know, so um, this is a volcanic eruption on uh, one of uh, Jupiter's moons. And nobody has an explanation for why this is happening. But I believe that this is the same principle happening on one of Jupiter's moons. Okay, it's a beautiful picture of this one. <laughs> Can you see that? Okay, and uh, the, the other real surprise to it when we looked at things in the, the Chandra uh, telescope is um, comets, do you know comets? Like Halley's, what do you call it here? Halley's Comet? Halley's Comet, mm -hmm. Halley's comet yeah. Okay, <laughs> I know it's different over here. So, <laughs> you know, Halley's Comet, when it, when it actually um, uh, appears, you know, you've got this ice ball and it, you know, it appears with a tail going away from the sun. You know, people, have been thinking for you know years now that comets are actually um, you know just balls of ice, and uh, as they get near to the sun, suddenly the sheets of ice start to melt and come off in a in a dust sheet, and that's what produces a comet's tail. Okay, when we actually look at the data with the new telescopes that we've got, guess what we find? Bipolar. Yeah. <laughs> We find a bipolar concentrated jet, not a sheet of ice that comes up. We actually find concentrated jets, and guess what? They're not even facing the sun, right? And that is a complete mystery to astrophysics at the moment, but it's what we would predict if the comets were also, guess what, black holes. You know, so you can see why I'm calling it black hole principle, because it's a principle that's going throughout the cosmos. and um, Okay, you think, yeah, okay, that's okay for out here. All right, what about here? Okay, surprisingly, this is where we find a lot of the data actually stands up okay, on our very own planet. Okay, you think, yeah, okay, the Earth cannot be a black hole, there's no way you're gonna say, but guess what? We see a lot of data here that you would not expect. I mean, just, for example, I mean, this is classic. You know, you get um, the, vortices, uh, the vortex pictures. So the, remember I said the spiraling geometry goes throughout this black hole principle? Well, yeah, you see it everywhere. You actually see it in, um, you know, when the water drains down the black hole. You know, it's, it's part of the... And it, it, this spiral, by the way, spiral of light, actually creates all of our forces. It creates gravity, electromagnetism. You know, it, it, all of the forces and all the particles are just seeing the spiral at different angles. It's all to do with geometry. So I mean, anybody who's studied sacred geometry here, you know, you're well ahead of the game. <laughs> so, okay, so, um, and this is how the fields are, are created. And um, what I want to concentrate today is on looking at lightning. Okay, everyone's seen a thunderstorm. And uh, did you know that lightning, actually, the electrons that are, that are um, produced in a lightning flash are actually traveling like a third of the speed of light by the time they hit the planet? You know, they're really, really high energy. Okay, and um, guess what? Nobody knows really why lightning is produced. It's amazing when you go deep into science, what you actually find is that there are a lot of myths that are put out as explanations. And somebody clever said it one day, and it helps if they're dead, you know, because it makes it, <laughs> it makes it like come into the actual scientific folklore. It's like, you know, it's really good on your CV if you're actually dead in science. So once, once you're dead or got a Nobel Prize, nobody argues with you. You know, so somebody somewhere said that the way that lightning is actually produced is actually you have clouds building up friction, and uh, then when they build up friction, then you get a lightning bolt, you know, to really just like static electricity. Guess what? The data doesn't add up. <laughs> so, you know, what you actually find is there's not enough static to actually produce these lightning bolts not enough static actually builds up. So we don't have an adequate explanation for lightning, but what we do now have are telescope satellites that are orbiting the Earth's um, atmosphere. So um, when we do that, we find that these very same gamma ray flashes that we find coming out of the black holes are happening in our own atmosphere. You know, and strangely enough, and again, I think this should make headline news. I really do. 
It's got the same energy as we find coming out of black holes. So even in our own Earth's atmosphere, you know, we've actually got, um, you know, the processes that are so similar to black holes. So I know it sounds crazy, but again, the Earth is black holes upon black holes. And, uh, you know, there's vortices and vortices. Have you been to Sedona here? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, the famous vortices in Sedona, you know, so you've got these energetic vortices. So all of these energy spots that we feel, they're actually the black hole principle in action. They're, they're just larger sort of chakras of the planet. Mm -hmm. They're the black hole principle. And, you know, it's things like the uh, Bermuda Triangle, you know, so remember I said that, um, you know, what, part of the black hole principle is the electron and the positrons produce, so you produce antimatter. Well, one of the properties of antimatter is anti-gravity. So, you know, you have these spots, like there's one in Southern California, isn't it, called the mystery spot? Is anybody here? It's here. here? There's oh, one is it? Here. Oh, it's here. here. All right, okay. So there you of go. You see, <laughs> sorry? Of course oh, it's here. Oh, so wonder why it's here. <laughs> Experience. Well, the things yeah. roll uphill as, as opposed to um, downhill. Yeah. It, it goes against gravity. Also, too, I mean, the, the uh, physics students that go up there, I mean, they do all kinds of experiments oh. there and they can't figure it out either. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. um, at least so far, anyway. Yeah. And then part of it they thought might be a hoax, but, uh, you know, just yeah. only part of it, only part. Well, I think that's the um, reaction of the scientific community to, th to, I mean, a lot of these things I've been talking about, it's like, oh no, this can't be happening. You know, which is why, you know, you get, so you, <laughs> so you still get um, a lot of these ideas being put out that black holes are still the guzzlers and da 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 da. And I went on um, national TV in, in uh, England with uh, R Professor Richard Dawkins and he was trying to, you know, he picked this clip with me talking about black holes being created because he wasn't up to date on the cosmology. So he thought I was being like a, you know, and actually I was completely up to date and he was the one that, yeah, but anyway. <laughs> so this is not a Richard Dawkins bashing his session. So like, um, yeah, so the mystery spot, thank you very much for that because, you know, what you're seeing is an effect of anti-gravity. So at certain places, and you know, I don't know exactly why, there's some holes that, in black hole principle, but you know, <laughs> to fill out, you know, but um, the anti-gravity of the uh, antimatter region predominates. You know, certain spots. So I think that's what's happening at places like the the spot that you're talking about. So, um, you know, as I said, you know, the Earth has lots of evidence that it's actually showing this principle. So we have these terrestrial gamma ray flashes in the up Earth's upper atmosphere, and guess what? They're associated with lightning storms. So when you get a lightning storm, you have these spreading out at the speed of light. Right? That's part of our principle, and this is what we measure. And it, what's really nice is that it's actually named after the fairy realm, so this is called an L. <laughs> you know, <laughs> seriously. And you have red sprites. <laughs> so all the phenomena we see now in the Earth's upper atmosphere is sort of named after the fairy realm, which is really mm -hmm. nice. So you get these spreading out of these, um, of these uh, you know, disks that are going at the speed of light. And uh, out of these, associated with these gamma ray flashes that are happening around here, are also these um, lightning flashes. So we've got the gamma rays, we've got the speed of light, and we've got the lightning flashes. So we've got the electrons coming out really, really fast. You know, so we've got the same principle going on either, even in our planet. And um, I don't know if you, uh, I, I showed you this picture of the Earth's magnetic field. You know, we know that the Earth has a magnetic field. You know. Um, the idea that, uh, you know, behind this so far has been that the Earth's got an iron molten core, have you heard this? And as it moves around, it creates a magnetic field. And, you know, that's the sort of um, you know, principle at the moment. There's no proof for this. You know, I mean, have you ever tried to speak to somebody who doesn't believe you're in your spiritual beliefs and you're saying, well, you know, I believe this. So they go, oh, well, you know. <laughs> like, There's no proof for this iron magnetic core at all. When we actually look at the Earth's inner core, what we find is matter and antimatter spiraling out, which is what we would expect from if our principle was correct, yeah?